In this video, I'll be using what we learned about the cross product from basic concepts one through three to create a left-right detector for a simple scene with two objects. We'll get to see the right hand thumb rule used in a more practical use case. This video will mostly cover the setup for the VEX code and cross product. Now let's move on to basic concept number four, where I use the cross product on this little to determine if an object is on the left or right. So I, here I have this little pyramid that's on its side and that's going to be my simplistic robot. And I'm trying to figure out if this sphere is on the left or right of the robot. And all this is done using cross product. Come over here and I'm going to change the position of the sphere. And let's see if that this little value over here updates. So let's see if that value updates with the correct labeling. All right. So it successfully indicates if the sphere is on the left or right of this little simplistic robot I have here. And all this is done using cross product. This not only works by changing the position of the sphere, it also works if we change the position of the robot. So let's come over here. I'm going to change the position of this. Let's turn this around. All right. Now let's let's turn them around. So even if I rotate the robot, you, we can still, it, it successfully indicates the correct direction, left or right, if the sphere is on the left or right. So if we turn them around back, we get the left, uh, if you can read backwards, <laughs> correct value of the left. Now what happens if we translate the robot? So if I take this, uh, we need to be on the right perspective, just because this string is flat. All right. Okay, so this is the beauty of cross product. It will work no matter where the position is because the cross product puts into consideration the direction or the orientation of your objects. So wherever the robot is facing, it actually has that information. Like it takes to account that information as well. So if we turn this robot around, he this robot is going to be facing somewhere else. It's going to be facing on this side. And the cross product allows us to determine if it's on the left or right side. So it doesn't just use the positional values because if it was using the positional values, rotating this doesn't change the position. So this is the beauty of cross product. Now I use this example. Now this is basic concept number four, left or right. After digging into this, you this will come in and I'll show you how or why this is handy because this basic concept number four will build up to basic concept number five where we actually use this in a more practical example like um, procedural modeling where I procedurally model a bunch of chairs and I'll show you, you'll have a sneak peek. I'm using the cross product using the quite the same setup as you see here in this robot set up here. It's almost the same setup for the, these concert hall chairs. And they're all facing the direction of this imaginary sphere. Let me template it. This imaginary sphere over here. So if I move the sphere, you'll see that the keep your eye on all the chairs and the direction of all the chairs. You can see that they're moving. They're all facing towards um, the sphere. Now that you can also accomplish this in so many different ways, like you, you, it doesn't have to you, you don't have to have, you don't have to use cross product to get these uh, concert hall chairs to be facing the sphere. Like you, there's so many other ways. I mean, this is just me trying to use an example of how cross product can be used in procedural modeling when you're trying to place a bunch of things and they're all trying to point towards something or when the direction comes into play. This is just one example. Now, okay. After showing that small little teaser into basic concept number five, let's get back to basic concept number four first. The left and right example. Okay, so how does this work? How does the insides of this work? What is going on? Let me move that robot back in place first. I want the robot and the, the sphere to be in ground level. Now here, I just have a really simplistic robot. It, it's not really a robot, but I didn't know what else to call it. It's simply just a platonic solid octahedron, and I've blasted half of it. So this is what it was before. Uh, the transformation is just turning it on its side only because I blast one of the back. So this is what it was before. I blast the back of it or the butt of it and I had to turn it around. 
turn it on its side. And then I polyfill it to get this little diamond, half of a diamond. It's supposedly a robot. It's The usefulness of this is that it's pointing in the direction. We have this little pointy thing here. And it's pointing in the direction that it's facing. So it's facing this way. That This way I can tell which is the uh, front side and which is the back. So the back is all flat over here. So that's just a simple way for me to tell what this little object is pointing towards to. And let's take the sphere. The sphere doesn't have much to it. It's just a, a sphere. <laughs> Nothing much. Now, having those two objects, I grab the center point of two objects. Okay, let me template the robot. And I'm going to uh, remove the grid. Here's the robot. Okay, let me get a good angle. And I'm blasting it. And I'm keeping the front, that the front point. That's the only point I'm keeping. Then I take the center, which of the robot, which is actually just the butt. I have the vector telling me where the robot is facing. So if I take a line here, the robot is actually facing this way. So this vector will tell me the orientation of the robot, the position and the orientation. Perfect. Apply all this to the cross product. Now let me pull this out. Now this here is the front. This gives us the robot vector. But as you can see here, I have another thing that I'm merging in to this line over here. So let's take a look what that is. And I'm actually merging in the sphere object in this whole thing as well. I'm taking it all and feeding it into my cross product. So what do we have for our cross product? Point 0 and point 1. Uh, let me turn on the point numbers. Point 0 here, point 1. So point 0 and 1 are the robot vectors. And that's what I'm getting here. I'm getting the front of the robot by subtracting point 0 minus point 1. That results in this vector, which is the face direction of the robot. Now the sphere, the sphere is what I call the other point of the lack of a better description. And you'll see that the I get the other point by taking the point of the sphere, which is point 2, which is this point over here. It's point 2. So that's what I'm getting. This is what it's getting. It's getting the position of the sphere. Now I take that position and I subtract point 1. What's point 1? Point 1 is this. Is this point over there. So why would I subtract, why would I take the sphere position and subtract that point? Well, what do we get out of that though? Now we should get this vector that's pointing towards this. Okay, so what was the other vector? What was that front vector that we're feeding into the cross product? The front of the robot? Well, let's draw it out. Yeah, so these two vectors, the blue and the green that I've drawn in the overlays are the two vectors I'm feeding into the cross product. Well, what will that result in? That will result in a perpendicular vector or an orthogonal vector pointing up or down. If you can picture your thumb, your right hand pointing upwards, and you have the, the two, a second and third finger pointing um, at, the blue line here and the green line here, imagine what, if your thumb points downwards, what happens to those two fingers? Well, the second finger won't change anything in, any, in its position, but the third finger will end up being on this side. When the sphere is on the right side of the robot, now you can bring out your right hand, the thumb tends to point upward when the second and third finger align with the blue and green vectors that you see on the screen right now. If the sphere is on the right side of the robot, we'll have to update our vectors. The green vector will now be pointing to the other side towards the new position of the sphere. And our right hand rule needs to be updated as well. After aligning the second and third finger, to the green and blue vectors, our thumb will naturally point downwards. So this relationship up and down allows us to determine if the sphere is on the left or right position of the robot. The important part is how we calculate the second vector that we input into the cross product. We're actually getting, we're taking one point and subtracting another. From basic concept number one, two, and three, I've always did that subtraction of the vector, but only for one of the vectors. I never did it for the second vector. It's important to note that you'll need a relative vector for both. For example, in this scenario, with the robot and sphere, both objects are moving and 
Each movement of either object will change the outcome of the direction. If the sphere is moved to a new position, this will change the left-right result. If the robot turns around, it will also change the left-right result. By doing the vector subtractions, it will guarantee that we'll have the correct orientation of each object when calculating the cross product. We're not done yet. We still need a condition or something from the cross product to tell us if the object is on the left or right, a clear property that will tell us straightforward. In the next video, I'll take a look into the formula of the cross product and develop a way to determine if the object is on the left or right. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.